This is DJI's brand new optically stabilized camera Pocket 3. This little Pocket Monster has a 1-inch sensor with 3.2 micrometer pixel size. It can shoot videos up to 4K 120 frames per second. It can record in D-Log M and the BT2020 HDR, you know, the real one. It has low light recording mode, phase detection autofocus, time code, a 2-inch rotating screen that also turns the camera on and off, and active track 6, which works like a charm. It can live broadcast, it can be used as a webcam, even on Mac, it can do things like panorama, motion lapse, and with a 65 watt PD charger, it can be charged up to 80% in 16 minutes or 100% in 32 minutes. But wait, there is more! If you get the crater combo, besides the other accessories, it comes with DJI Mic 2 which connects directly to Pocket 3 without the need of a receiver. Actually, you can connect two DJI Mic 2s to Pocket 3. Now, that's what I call an upgrade. And here it is, DJI Osmo Pocket 3 Creator Combo comes in this nicely designed box. DJI Osmo Pocket 3 standard version costs $519 and this Creator Combo costs $669 US dollars. Inside the box we're greeted with Pocket 3's bag, a box and some papers that we don't read much. The box has the Pocket 3's protective case cover. Protective case cover is nicely designed and it holds a lot of things as you'll be seeing soon. Inside the bag, we're greeted with the battery handle that has 950 milliampere hour battery, which can increase the battery life of Pocket 3 by 62%. It also has a USB-C port that can be used to connect audio devices. It also has a quarter inch thread so you can mount it on a tripod and etc. Then we have the mini tripod, which has a really nice finish and a grip and it can be an extender for your Pocket 3. Then we have the regular handle which has a USB-C and a quarter inch mount and then we have DJI Mic 2 transmitter which connects directly to Pocket 3. Actually you can connect two of these to Pocket 3. DJI Mic 2 comes with the super soft wind diffuser which mounts into mic jack and then we get a wrist strap and then if we don't really carefully check the bag there is DJI Osmo Pocket 3. This gorgeous screen can be flipped to turn on Pocket 3 and flipped back to turn it off. And when you go back and check your bag, you'll realize that there is a magnet for your mic too and wide angle lens that turns Pocket 3's 20mm lens into 15mm. You can also get an expansion adapter to mount Pocket 3 on action camera mounts and a black mist diffuser filter if you want softer, less digital looking images. This is without it. This is with it. Without it, with it. Without it, with it. Pocket 3 is a little bigger than Pocket 2, but it weighs 179 grams. It has three microphones and a speaker. The f2.0 20mm lens's minimum focus distance is 20 centimeters, which is great. The 1 inch sensor has 3.2 micrometer pixel size which means this camera can gather light very easily. And that is why, approximately, this camera sensor is 9.4 megapixels. We will talk about that later. It can shoot 4K 24 to 60 frames per second in normal D-Log M or HDR mode. And you can use active track up to 60 frames per second as well. In 4K 120 frames per second slow-mo or low-light mode, 
there is no tracking or color profiles available. If you like to shoot vertically, it can do it by using the sensor and it allows you to record videos up to 3K 60 frames per second, 9 to 16 video. It has 1300 milliampere hour battery and DJI says the operating time is 166 minutes while recording in 1080p 24 frames per second. I was able to record 4K 60 frames per second close to 120 minutes. The camera shut down because it ran out of battery and not because of overheating. Okay, look at this. I'm tracking the green dress. We're gonna go over here in front of these things and just finds it back. And I'm gonna come here. And I lost it, right? And I'm gonna come back. It finds it again. And finds it again. <laughs> and this is really challenging, by the way. Let me show you what happens when I switch to vertical. First of all, we say continue. As you can see, right now we're recording in vertical and there's more space on top and bottom of the screen because it's using the uh, sensor that way. So there's more in the frame. It's not just a regular crop. But I wish the gimbal itself rotated uh, 90 degrees. By the way, it's incredible that, you know, from the first Mavic video to here, we came a long way. There's a very big difference between electronic image stabilization and optical image stabilization. For electronic image stabilization, you need the footage to be sharp. So you cannot sacrifice from your shutter speed. Your shutter speed has to be high so that when the software fixes the footage, it doesn't look smudgy, which also means the footage needs to be cropped in so they can cut from the corners to be able to apply the electronic image stabilization. When it comes to optical image stabilization, none of that matters. What that means is you can shoot in the proper frame rate you want to shoot. You don't have to shoot at a higher frame rate, which means your camera is going to gather more light and there's going to be a lot less smudging because, you know, the camera itself is stabilized. The pixel size of the sensor is 3.2 micrometer. That is huge, huge. What that means is it gathers a lot of light, as you can see in the low light. It is very important because a lot of people, a lot of companies play the megapixel game, which doesn't mean anything. Let me summarize it for you, what megapixel means. Imagine a pizza and imagine how many slices there are on that pizza. This is a very simplified version. If I tell you that my pizza has 24 uh, slices and someone else says it has eight slices, what's happening in reality? Yes, you're getting the same pizza. It's all marketing to a certain level if we're talking about quad bear sensors. And that is why this thing is fantastic because it doesn't play that megapixel game. It plays the pixel size game. The bigger the pixel size, the more light it gathers in low light. And that's really important. Okay, let's have a microphone uh, test. Right now what you're hearing is recorded by Osmo Pocket 3. It is set to stereo, wind noise reduction is turned on, and it is recording from all directions. I'm not using this microphone yet. It's really windy right now, so I don't know how it's doing. Let's see what happens when we switch to this. And right now, I'm using the DJI Mic 2. And actually, you can connect two of these to Pocket 3, which is fantastic. So if you have a friend, you can wear it. I clearly don't, I'm walking here all by myself. And it can record both of you nicely.
The webcam mode works really simple. You just plug in your Pocket 3 to your computer and as soon as you plug it in, if it's turned on, it will switch to webcam mode by itself. It's going to show a countdown, 3, 2, 1, and it activates the webcam mode. And as you can see, it is working just like that. Needless to say, it can track you and you can use it as a microphone as well. Well, thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Also, thank you so much DJI for sponsoring this Pocket 3 showcase. As usual, I'm curious about what you think about this product. Do you own the previous generation of Osmo Pockets? Is this something you want to upgrade to? What did you think about the one inch sensor? and the pixel size, the fantastic pixel size. I think that is gonna be the fantastic thing about this gadget. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. And until I see you the next time, probably it's gonna be the iPhone review. I hope so. I spent so much time on that video. I'm having paralysis analysis or the other way around. One or the other, I don't know, it's, it's happening. It's not good, but I have a lot of data to share with you. Until I see you next time, take really good care of yourselves and horse chakala. No, you hang up.